Hello everyone, my name is Vicar John and welcome to our weekly worship service. I thank you for being here. Uh, we try to bring this every week so that those of you who don't have a church home or a place to go for, where you can't go for some reason can tune in to a, a, a worship service and, uh, and uh, come to God through, that, through this new media. Uh, we have the internet and I uh, praise the Lord that uh, for our daughter who uh, set this up for me and we've been doing this for over a year now, a year and a half and we just praise the Lord all the time. So thank you very much for, for joining us in, joining with us and making this all possible. Uh, before we begin today, I would like to make some announcements that I always make. You can find us on YouTube uh, and uh, Facebook under Vicar John or you can go to our website and go to vicarjohn.com and find us there and you'll find the worship services and other things, uh, daily moments. Uh, we also during the service today and every day we, we you can push the pause button to play some music at any time. Music is a very important part of, of worship for so many people and, and, uh, and hope if it's very important for you then we ask that uh, um, you uh, push the pause button and, and go to a time of music wherever you feel it's needed and uh, some of the songs I have today are Change My Heart O God, Give Thanks, all hail the power of Jesus' name. And of course, an old standby, a favorite. What a friend we have in Jesus. Uh, anyway, we also have prayer time coming up. And you can push the pause button for that also. And I will prompt you when we go to a moment of silent prayer. Uh, because uh, prayer is so very important. And uh, for, for uh, everyone. Not just some people, but for everyone. Uh, so anyway, that's what we have coming up here. Uh, now we'll have the title of today's sermon is Jesus' Powerful Prayer. His Powerful Prayer. Let's, uh, let's go into that a little bit. But first of all, let's, uh, let's begin our service with, with uh, the ringing in the hour of worship. Praise the Lord for that. Let us pray our opening prayer. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you and praise you so much for all that you do. We, uh, we ask that you cast out any bad spirits that might be among us wherever we are and just anoint us with the Holy Spirit as we come now to listen to you and listen to your words uh, as you show us how to pray. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our call to worship today comes from Psalms uh, 68 verses 3 and 4. But may the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. Sing to God. Sing praise to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. His name is the Lord. And rejoice before him. Praise the Lord for that. Now we come to a time of uh, prayer time. As I mentioned a moment ago. And, and uh, uh, you can uh, in a moment I'll give you an opportunity to push the pause button. And go to your own time of personal prayer. Uh, and if you have special requests you want to send to us, you can just let me know, and uh, and we will pray gladly pray for for uh, anyone that uh, needs prayer. Uh, so anyway, let's let's go now to our our time of prayer. O holy Creator, O holy God, who has made us for an eternal home, eternally yours. We ask for your wisdom as we seek you in our lives, our thoughts, and our prayers, as we pray to you. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And now we come to you in a moment of silent prayer. Please push the pause. Oh gracious Lord, we thank you for the love you give us. This love that really we don't understand because it seems to me like uh, we are just too busy fighting. And, and uh, uh, we have become our own worst enemies as uh, Democrats hate Republicans and Republicans hate Democrats and, and neighbors hate neighbors. And it just goes right on down the line, Lord. Uh, we are just in Satan's world and we are being controlled by it. Help us, Lord. Help us to turn to you because you are the power. You are the only power that matters. 
Uh, political power means nothing, Lord, nothing compared to your power. And we thank you for that, that you are so powerful and you are so willing for us to come to you at any and all times. We just thank you, Lord. Help us to come to you uh, through thought and, and action and especially through prayer. We just praise you, Lord, for all this. And now we ask that you bless these people in ways that are pleasing to you. I'm thinking of the hurting and poor throughout the world and, and wherever they may be in our neighborhoods, wherever. Just uh, help us to minister to them. Uh, help us to minister to our leaders in this country and in countries far away, uh, whether they are Democrat or Republican, Lord. Help us to f help them find the way to you. And also we ask that you be with our troops wherever they may be, Lord. We just thank you <clears throat> and praise you for this time we get to come together each and every week uh, where you can just tell us about the love you have for us, Lord. And we can tell you about the love we have for you. We just thank you and praise you as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from uh, uh, the book of John, uh, chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. Um, this is just the first part of this very important chapter, and you will see why it's so important here in just a moment. After Jesus said this, he looked toward the heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those who have you have given him. Now this eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, I have brought you glory on the earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those who you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray this for them. I'm not praying for the... For, I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. The glory has come to me through him. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave to me, so that they may be one as we are one. The words of God for the people of God. And all God's people would say, praise be to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we just thank you and praise you, Lord, for your wonderful word. And we ask that the words of my mouth be your words, and they fall upon open ears and minds, and especially open hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to change gears again uh, uh, as I do so often, uh, but we'll get back to Genesis uh, uh, one of these days, and it'll be okay. We'll, 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 everything will be good there. Hopefully you've noticed over the time we've gotten to know each other a little bit uh, that I place a lot of importance on prayer. Uh, in chapter, chapter 17 is the end of the narrative in John that John has on the Last Supper. This chapter is called Jesus' Priestly Prayer chapter because in it he prays for his disciples and us in a priestly manner. In those days you went to the priest and he prayed for you, uh, he interceded for you, uh, not unlike what we have in some churches today. Today we're going to look at the first half of this priestly prayer and see how it applies to us today. I wonder if, if we can pick up a few tips on prayer from Jesus. Let's see. Bruce Ball tells a story of a young man who went to a logging camp and asked for a job. The, 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 the boss asked if he could fell a tree with an axe. This had to be a long time ago because I don't know if they use axes much anymore in the, in the logging industry. Anyway, the young man cut down a tree like he was a pro. 
and the, hire, and the foreman hired him. The first day out in the woods, he outdid everyone else. Uh, then something strange happened. Each day after that, he got slower and slower. Finally, on Friday, he could barely cut down one tree. He sat down on the ground and then reflected on what he was doing. His swing was good and he was hitting the right spot, but nothing was happening. About this time, the foreman came over to the young man and the young man told him of, the pro of his problem. The, bo the boss said he knew what was wrong. He told him that he had been so busy all week trying to do all the things that a logger does that he had forgotten to do the basics of the, jo of the job and sharpen his ax. Hmm. This is what we're going to talk about today as we, try to, as we try to find ways to sharpen our acts of prayer. And I spell that A-C-T-S, acts of prayer, so that they may be beneficial to all. Uh, I think that this is one of the greatest chapters in the Bible. Uh, this prayer that Jesus prays has three parts. The first part of the prayer is about himself. The second part of the prayer is about the disciples. And the third part is about all believers. I think that it is important to understand that this takes place just before Jesus is betrayed by Judas. There are a lot of bad things that are going to happen in the next few hours <clears throat> to Jesus, and yet just listen to the gentleness of his voice. He begins by saying that the time has come, his time has come. This is a phrase that John uses quite a bit in his gospel, and now his time has finally come. Jesus came here so that he would die on the cross for us. He taught us a lot of things in three short years of ministry, but this is the real reason that he came. And, he, and what does he ask for in this, this dark hour? He asks for glory, glory, but not the kind that we might think. He asks for glory that comes when we glorify the Father. He goes on to say that he, Jesus, has all authority over all people and he is asking to glorify the Father. If you notice one thing about Jesus, please note that he always tries to glorify the Father and not himself. So let me just be blunt here for a moment. How is your prayer life? Are you stuck in a rut or are you asking for the same things over and over again? Well, once again, as he always does, Jesus has an answer for you. Whenever you, we pray, whenever you pray, you should be praying for the glory of God. You should be praying that no matter what you ask for, it will be for the glory of God. I know that many times we forget to do this, and I'm just as guilty as anyone else. We get so caught up in asking for help for this person and that person that we forget to ask for these things for the, glo for the glory of God, for God's glory. Remember this when you pray. There's something else here that, that I think sticks out rather obviously. Jesus begins by praying for himself. Okay, I would hazard a guess here that due to our North Dakota heritage or even our American heritage, uh, most of us pray for ourselves as an afterthought, if at all. And maybe in some cases, maybe that's all we pray for. Uh, one of the reasons that we should always, uh, we should start the, our body of prayers with ourselves is like the analogy I used a few weeks ago about the seat belts. You remember that? We cannot help anyone if we are injured due to not wearing our seat belt. The same thing is important about our prayers, okay? Uh, if, if we don't get ourselves squared away, if we don't get Satan put out of our systems, then we will do little good by praying for someone else. I know this is really a hard concept for, for many of us, but this is coming directly from Jesus. Take care of yourself and pray for yourself first. This is one of the few places where Jesus tells us directly who he is. He is God, uh, and he has been given all authority. In verse 5, he tells us that he was there before the world began. Jesus has told us these things before, but not in such a straightforward manner as he is here. This is something that we should remember when we pray. We are praying to the one who was there before the world began. He made the world. He is that powerful. And yet, yet, he is willing and wanting to talk with you. Little old you. You are that important to the very maker of the universe. 
You cannot be bad enough, disgusting enough, or anything else enough that Jesus does not want to talk to you. He made you, and he wants to have a relationship with you. No matter what you think, you were made to be in a relationship with God through the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. This is where we all belong. Everyone belongs here. And if you don't have this, or maybe you've strayed from this, then ask Jesus back, or ask uh, Jesus through the Holy Spirit to live in your heart today. This is important because your eternal life depends on this. As we learn from Scripture, repent and ask Jesus into your life. And I, I know you'll never regret it. The last thing I want to point out about this part of the prayer is that Jesus is telling us uh, <clears throat> that he has brought glory to the Father by completing the work that the Father gave him to do. His job is done, and, and now it is time for him to leave. Uh, it will be another 40 plus days or so before this finally happens and we celebrate this every year and it's called Ascension Sunday when he rises and goes back to heaven. His work is done and he was coming home. I've heard this said many times over the years and I've thought it just like, just like the rest of you. I've thought why did Jesus bring this person home when they are so young or when they are just getting started in life or, or when they have so much more to give? And here's the answer. Their job was done. It's not, uh, it's not for us to know or, or, or understand why this is. We need to understand that our thinking is not like the thinking of God. There's no way that we can understand how God works or how he thinks. We are just human and so are our ideas. But each one of you has a job to do. And when, when you are done, then you get to go home to paradise. We may not know, and we usually don't know uh, what our job is, except that we are to follow Jesus all the time. We are to follow Jesus no matter what we do. We need to be satisfied in this and bring all glory to him. As we move to the second part of this beautiful prayer, I, I, I hope that you can feel that the love, of, the love that Jesus has for you so far. Uh, he just loves all of us so much, uh, and, and his love for you is, is immense. The second part of this prayer is where Jesus is praying for the disciples. These are the men that God gave to Jesus for him to train. Uh, these men have been faithful, except for Judas. They have been with and watching the Master for three years. And now tough times are coming ahead as Jesus goes home. To illustrate this, Tim Zingale tells a story of a senior banker, uh, uh, senior executive in, in a bank in, in one of New York City's largest banks and how he came to power. He started out years before uh, at an early age as an office boy. One day, the president of the bank called him aside and said to him, I want you to come into my office and be with me each day. Well, the young man replied, but what can I do to help? I don't know anything about finances. The, the president replied, never mind that. You will learn what I want to teach you a lot faster if you stay by my side and keep your eyes and ears open. Uh, that was the most significant experience of my life, said the now famous banker. Being with that wise man uh, made me just like him. I began to do things the way he did them, and, and that accounts for where I am today. Okay, these disciples had learned from the very best of the best, Jesus Christ. This prayer applies to us also. Jesus came to model to the disciples so that they could pass it on to other people. And here we are, 2,000 years later, with the same information, the same instructions, and the same instructor, Jesus Christ. Have you ever known someone that for some reason that you can't explain, uh, they seem to have Jesus and goodness just flowing out of every pore of their body? These people are our modern day disciples. These are the ones to learn from, just like our banker friend did. There isn't a person here today listening that cannot do the same thing. Jesus has been calling you 
for all of your life. He calls you to come together in church for fellowship with other believers. He calls you to pray to him on a regular basis so that he can instruct you on what you are to be doing. He calls on you to read his word, to read the Bible and study it on an ongoing basis. All the things that we talk about every week, Jesus calls on you to do. There are people who are here today who I look up to because of what Jesus has done for them and what he is doing right now. This is what being a Christian is all about. <clears throat> then we have Jesus praying for his disciples for protection and sanctification or growth. Jesus will be leaving very shortly. And these 11 uh, men carry the responsibilities of the world on their shoulders and they don't even know it. They, are, they will be facing severe hardships in the future. There would be only one of these 11 disciples who would not be put to death in some fashion for his belief. Jesus knows this, and he asks the Father to protect them. He knows that they will falter, like we falter. Peter will deny him. Thomas will doubt him. He knows all of this. He knows it, and still he asks for their protection. Without this protection, they will not be able to grow. We all need to be able to grow. As a culture, we seem to be pretty well protected and we have it pretty nice, but we have not do, done a great job of growing. The latest fad is, is that all religions pray to the same God, so all religions are right. <clears throat> This is not so. This is wrong. It's so wrong in so many ways. We seem to be very tentative and afraid to take a step in faith. I mentioned this uh, uh, several. Uh, this, the, uh, I mentioned this before, just a few weeks ago. Uh, several years ago, we took some students up to the food bank here in Fargo to help distribute some food to the needy. It was a wonderful event of stepping out for those young people. Anyway, on the way home, one of the students said, "You know, doing this just gives me a good feeling inside. A good feeling inside." That, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is Jesus telling that young person that he's done a good job. Sometimes when you attend church, you are honored to witness a baptism. This is a good time to take note of this prayer and apply it. The, the child or adult getting baptized is going to need all the protection that we can pray for if he or she is to achieve the goal that Jesus has in mind for them. We need to be praying for ourselves so that we can help him or her grow in a godly manner. Once again, it's like wearing those seat belts. We cannot help anyone if we don't take care of ourselves first. Uh, we need to pray that Jesus will protect these babies or children or adults and guide them in life. These are the things we should be asking for in our prayers for anyone and everyone. Forget about asking for more money or, or a new job or more professions, or more possessions, I mean. Uh, ask Jesus, uh, ask that Jesus would be in control uh, of, the, of the lives of your loved ones. That is what to ask for. He, would, he asked that he would help to protect them and help them to grow. These are the great things in life. And don't forget <clears throat> that Jesus fed the 5,000 and the 4,000, walked on water, raised Lazarus from the dead, turned water to wine to name just a few of the, his miracles. Don't you think that he might be able to do something small and mundane like protect you and help you grow? Uh, don't let your stubborn heritage keep you from talking to Jesus today. Talk to him. Talk to him. He goes on to pray for all believers after this. I urge you to finish reading this section and learn some more about this great this great, great prayer. I also urge you to try these things we talked about today in your private prayer life. Th these are ways to get a glimpse of our wondrous God. And that should be your goal. should be your goal to get a glimpse of God every morning and every evening. Then you can build on this as you get the hunger to grow more as you talk to Jesus even more. Soon you'll be overflowed with unbridled enthusiasm for Jesus. I've seen it many times. I've seen it in some of you, and I pray that all will be able to achieve this. God made you so that you could be in an intimate relationship with him. Use this prayer and talk with your creator. He loves you more than I can ever begin to tell. Let's go to him today. And thank you, Jesus, for first loving us. Let us pray. 
Gracious Lord, we thank you for, for showing us so many things. And today you show us how to pray, uh, ways to pray, who to pray for. We just thank you for all the instructions you give us, Lord. And now give us the wisdom to follow them. Follow them. Give us the wisdom to take action. We just praise you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This concludes our service for today, and I thank you for being here. And now for the benediction. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you, and may his face shine upon you. As you go out into this world, noticing everything everywhere that's so good that he made just for you, and then praying for other people. Go in God's peace. Thank you, and amen.